Why does it look like that? It's something that a lot of paleontologists ask about weird and strange animals in the fossil record, and one of those are the Wallacerops trilobites. The most obvious feature on the Wallacerops trilobites is that kind of prong that's out at the front, the trident. And there's been a lot of ideas as to why it had that, why it looked like that. And most of these ideas have been based around, well, hey, maybe it was competition with other Wallacerops, but the other idea has been maybe it was a hunting mechanism, potentially either spearing as the more bold idea of this, or potentially just scooping from under the sand, prey that the trilobite could then eat. There's four different species within the genus Wallacerops, and you can see that each of their different tridents is a little bit different. So it doesn't necessarily mean they were all using it for the same purpose, or at least using it in the exact same way. But how would we be able to tell this? Well, a new specimen really helps to show us how they could have done this. And that's because this one doesn't have a trident, it has a fork. Underneath the rightmost tine on this trilobite is actually an extra tine, and you can kind of see it underneath. And you can see that it's not going quite the same direction. But still, it's something that helps to show that it was distinct, not as a species, but as an individual. There's always variation in a species. I mean, for example, I only had three wisdom teeth. Some people are taller or shorter. Some trilobites had four prongs instead of three. It's all normal variation. These researchers wanted to understand better how it became that way. And that means understanding how these tines actually grew. And what they found is that at first they would grow just as a single straight line and then split into two. And then from in between that, that's where the third middle tine would actually start from. It was just a single process going forward that split in two. And then again, third one comes from the middle. And that really helps to answer some potential questions about why this one may have had it this way. First, it wasn't regrowth from a broken one. If it was like that, you'd probably expect to see the tine on the side being a little bit smaller near where it broke. And that makes a lot of sense. You'd have the tines coming out normally, the rightmost one would break, and then as it broke and started to regrow, it'd grow into two, but they'd each be smaller. They'd each be kind of a juvenile Wallace or Ops prong. And again, while it's covered, you can still see that fourth tine. It is long enough to go, yeah, this isn't a juvenile's prong on here. It's a fully grown individual's. This means there's probably one of two likely scenarios. The first is just, hey, there's a genetic mix-up. Essentially, the signal that tells the animal to grow that third tine essentially got doubled over on each side of the branch. Because especially when you look at some of those other tines that are the normal kind, you can see where that branch is, and then slightly off center from it on either side, that's where the middle tine grows from. It doesn't necessarily grow perfectly in the middle. And again, that really just means that potentially that genetic signal that says, hey, start growing a middle tine just doubled up on each side of the split. That's not totally impractical. The other option though is potentially more interesting where the animal may have been shedding when it was young. And actually some of that shed may have caught on a tine and damaged it in some way, which then caused it to regrow a new one when it was still young, importantly, and then both tines still stayed. What you can also see though is that the three other ones that aren't underlying another tine, they're not in the normal position, and that's really important because this specimen of Wallacerops was also basically fully grown, which really helps to suggest that it probably wasn't for feeding. It wasn't spearing prey or digging under the sand with this. And we can say that because if it was meant for that, it's pretty unlikely that this individual Wallacerops would have actually survived into adulthood, it probably would have starved before then. This meant the authors were able to pretty confidently suggest that, yeah, this was probably for some sort of competition in between individuals of Wallacerops, where essentially they're fighting one another. And that makes some sense, and it's nice that they were actually able to use some comparisons for this, because they were actually able to take the general shape of the Wallacerops prong and look at beetles that do similar things today. And it doesn't perfectly match the shape of any of the modern beetles, but again, these trilobites were living underwater and modern beetles don't. So it makes sense it might be doing something a little differently. So this example at 400 million years old is probably our oldest current example at least of combat between a single species occurring in the fossil record, which is pretty neat to know. But it also means a few other things. For example, in the beetles that they compared it to, only the males have those. Meanwhile, every Wallacerops we found has these. And the places where they've been looked for have been very extensively looked for. A lot of these fossils come from Morocco, and after a long history of being colonized, there's not as much development there for different people to individually go and look for fossils 
but that also means that there's a large private sector going and collecting fossils to sell. And there's all kinds of ethics with that. I'm not here to discuss that, but just if they found something that seemed like a Wallacerops, but different and like a different species, we probably would know about it because it would be getting sold somewhere. So there may have potentially been some dimorphism or there wasn't essentially. And that means a few different things. If there wasn't, it just means, okay, maybe it wasn't for breeding purposes that these animals were competing. Maybe it was just different territories being competed for. But if there were differences, it means a few different things, depending on how everything is interpreted. First, maybe we just genuinely don't have any females. There's some species of animals today where the males will hang out in one area of the ocean for a while and females will hang out in a different area. And then only during breeding season do they actually meet up and do the breeding. But otherwise they're entirely isolated from one another. That could very well be something that happened. On the other hand, maybe they're just really dimorphic and we do have females of the same species, but they just don't look anything like Wallacerops. It's very much a possibility. In fact, there's some fossils of other trilobites from the same area that have really similar appearance, other than not having the prong and some of the spines along the back. For example, you have the animal Hollerdops, which again, really similar body plan, which for trilobite doesn't say a lot, but you can understand the similarities that exist between these two different animals. And there are even more species than this that are around at the same time. So again, it's very possible that we actually do have females of the same species, but they just don't look alike. And that's more likely than you might think. For example, in the modern great-tailed grackle, the males and females look so different that for a long time, ornithologists considered them two entirely different species until they saw some breeding and raising young that looked like both of them. And they went, oh, they're just sexually dimorphic. So it is totally possible for researchers to have not fully recognized some of these differences, especially with animals that have been dead for 400 million years. Regardless though, again, this paper helps to show that combat between individuals of a single species probably goes back at least 400 million years, so almost as old as the first stages of complex life. And then B, it also just really helps to answer this question of why are they like that? 